In this tutorial, I'll show you how to get values from the worksheet, put them into a macro, and then take them from the macro and put them back somewhere else in the worksheet. As well, I'll show you how to display the values in a little pop-up window that the user can see. Before we start, check the video description and click the link to Teach Excel so you can download the files for the tutorial and follow along. And make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials. So what I'm going to show you is how to get, for instance, the value here from cell A2, put it into a macro, and then put it over here in cell D2 or E6 or even on another worksheet over here. So let's first go to the VBA window. It is Alt F11. When you're here, remember we need to insert a module that's going to allow us to make the macro. So we go to Insert module. The window is going to be small initially like this. Let's make it big. And if you remember from the last tutorial, we first have to create the container for the macro. So we type sub and then we can type the name of the macro. Get and output. Hit enter and the container is filled in for us. Perfect. So in here between sub and n sub is where we do everything. Remember for a comment, you type a single quote and then comment. And this is code that will not actually run. We use it to make our macro easier to understand. Now let's get started. The very first thing is how to get the value. And if you remember from the last tutorial, the first thing that we have to do is we have to reference the cell. Where do we want to get the value from? Well, let's get it from cell A2. So we type range, open parentheses, quotation mark, cell A2, close quote, close parentheses. Now we've told the macro on what cell we want to do something. So we want it to deal with cell A2. What do we want it to do? Type a period, and you should get a list of all the things we can do with it. In this case, we want to type a value. So this is going to allow us to do something with the value that's in the cell. And that's really all there is to getting the value from a cell. You tell the macro which cell you want to get it from, and then you tell it what you want to do. You want to get the value. But this in and of itself is actually completely useless because, okay, great. So we have something that tells the macro that we want to do something with the value of range A2, but what do we want to do with it? If you remember from the last tutorial, in order to change the value of cell A2, all we did was put an equal sign and then type some text. And what that's going to do is it's going to put this text, so just high, inside cell A2. So this might be a little bit confusing because I just told you that this highlighted in blue is how you get the value of the cell. And now I just told you if you put an equal sign after it, it's how you set the value of the cell. Well, this right here with the range dot value is how you tell the macro that you're going to do something with what is in that cell. If you put the equal sign after it and then some text, you're telling the macro that you want to change the value of this cell to be equal to this. If you wanted to, let's say, put the value of cell A2 into cell B2, what we could do is change this to B2. And then over here, we will paste what we just wrote. So what this says is to set the value of cell B2 equal to the value of cell A2. So right here, when it's on both sides of the equal sign, you can see the two different things. Here we're going to get the value of cell A2. Here we're going to set the value of cell B2. So let's hit Alt F11 to check it out. Here's cell A2 and B2. Hit Alt F8. Select the macro, click Run, and you can see my value has become my value over here as well. Now let's go back to the VBA window. That can seem like kind of a confusing topic, but you just have to remember that it depends which side of the equal sign it's on. That's really all that we're doing here. If you're going to set the value, if you're going to get the value, etc. Let's stay on getting the value, okay? So here we have 
range a2.value. Now I just showed you how we could pull that into the macro. Right here we just did it directly. So we pulled the value in directly, and then we spit it back out directly into another cell. What you want to do is to set a variable equal to the value. So a variable is just something that's going to hold a value. So all you have to do is start typing, let's say ABC value, and then set it equal to range a2 dot value. So this right here, ABC value, is now our variable. What is contained inside of our variable? Well, we put an equal sign and then range a2 dot value. That now means that this text here, my value, is going to be contained within the variable ABC value. Now, throughout the entire macro, all that we have to do to reference what's in cell A2 is to write ABC value. So let me change this to get the value and set a variable equal to it. Now, in this little tiny example, it might be confusing. Why do I need to use a variable? You just showed me one way where I can just put the range or the cell right here instead of a variable, and it will go in that cell. But the thing is that when you have macros that get bigger and bigger and bigger, you could have to reference the value from this cell maybe 15 times. And when you do that, let's say you need to make one change. Let's say you need, say you need to make A2 become A3. Well, if you have this written 15 times throughout your macro, you're going to have to replace it 15 times. If you set it up here and put it into a variable like this, you only have to change it once because the variable stays the same throughout the macro. So it's a very important, once you pull a value into a macro, almost always you should put it inside of a variable. So here we have the variable name. Try and keep it simple. Use very descriptive words. And if you're going to put multiple words together, you can do a capital V like I did here. So just capitalize the first letter of the next word. It makes it a little bit easier to read. Now that we've got a value in the macro, let's do something with it. So I'm going to show you real quick how to display the value in a pop-up window. Now, technically, this is called a message box, but it's a pop-up window. So we type msg box space, and now all we have to do is to type the variable name abc value. Now let's go back to the spreadsheet and run our macro, alt f8, enter. And we have this little window here that says my value. So the value from cell A2 has now appeared inside the pop-up window. You can move the window. You can do whatever you want with it. You can close it by hitting the red X up here or hitting OK here. But note that while this is visible, if I move my mouse cursor off of it, I get the little blue circle. I can't do anything in the spreadsheet here. Can't select any cells. Can't do anything. So this takes all of the focus. And that's important to note if you want to force the user to look at something, you can show them a message box. And then they have to hit the X or OK before they can go back to doing stuff in the spreadsheet. Now that I've showed you that, I want to cover one important, so, so, so important thing. It is right up here. So I referenced range A2, right? But did I tell you what worksheet it's from? No, I didn't tell you if it's from sheet 1 or sheet 2 or sheet ABC or sheet anything. What that means is that the macro will get the value from cell A2 from whatever worksheet is currently visible. So if I go Alt F11 back here and I run the macro on sheet one, I get my value. If I run the macro on sheet two, I get one, two, three. So let's try it on sheet two, Alt F8, enter, and I get one, two, three. So that's so important because you could spend hours creating a macro, not realize that, and then go to a different sheet, a sheet that was unexpected, have the macro run and see all sorts of weird results and it can totally mess up your spreadsheet. So now let's comment this out with a single quotation mark. That means this line of code will no longer run. Go to the next line and let's go with ABC value equals. This time, let's declare the sheet. Let's say, Sheets, open parentheses, quotation mark. Now we put the name of the sheet. Let's say sheet one, close quote, close parentheses, period. Now let's tell it what cell, range A2. 
And now let's say what we want to do with that cell. Get the value. Now if you watched the last tutorial, I covered this pretty much in depth. But if you didn't, here's what it is. We first say, go to sheet one, or get something from sheet one, or deal with sheet one, basically. Then we say, well, what do you want to do on sheet one? Let's do something with cell A2. What do you want to do? Ah, let's get its value. So that's what all of this says. And now we have the value here, and we're going to put that value into this variable. Now it doesn't matter what sheet we're on. So let's hit Alt F11. We're on sheet two still. Alt F8, Enter. And it's my value, the value in cell A2 from sheet one. So always a good practice to be very specific with sheets. Otherwise, they're going to be relative cell references. Now let's go ahead and comment out the message box so the window won't appear and show you how to put values into cells. Let's go with specific cells. Now I kind of did this at the beginning of the tutorial and skipped ahead because I wanted to show you the value and how you can set the value or get the value. But let's just go over it real quick here and this time we'll use the variable to start with. So let's put a value into a cell. Let's be very specific this time. Let's do it, make sure I know the address. I'm gonna do it for cell D2 on sheet one. So let's do sheets, what sheet? Sheet with a name, sheet one. Range, what range? D2. And what do we wanna do with that cell? We want to do something with its value. Now we're gonna put the equal sign on the right side of it, which means we're going to change the value of this over here on the left side. What do we want to change the value to? Let's change it to whatever is in the variable ABC value. Let's check it out. Alt F11, Alt F8. Move it out of the way so you can see it. Cell D2. Run. And there you go. So this time, all we did was we used the variable. We got the value from the variable and we put it into cell D2 on sheet one. Now let's do the method we did before at the very, very start, but add sheets for both. Let's take the, well, let's go here, cell E6. I want to put it there and I want to get the value from cell A2 on sheet two. So what do we want to change? We want to change something on sheet one. What cell? We want to do it on range E6. What do we want to deal with? The value of the cell. Now, let's skip using the variable and just write it in by hand. We want to get a value from cell A2 on sheet two. So we do sheets, sheet two, range, A2, and a value. So now the left side of the equal sign, remember that's what's going to be changed. Cell E6 on sheet one and over here on the right side of the equal sign is what's going to be changed to sheet two, cell A2. Alt F11, Alt F8, move that over here, run. And there we go, one, two, three. Now let's comment that out. And the last thing I wanna show you is how to change the value of the currently active cell. Let's say put a value into active cell. Now the active cell is different than the selected cell. I'm not gonna explain it in this tutorial because I don't want to add any confusion to it. But just know for now, when you want to put the value in a single active cell, active cell. That's it. This is going to be the cell that the user has selected. It's not going to work for ranges, so multiple cells at once, just the single cell that the user has selected. So active cell. Now, what do we want to do with the active cell? You remember? Well, we want to do something with the value of it. We're dealing with the value of the cell. What do we want to do? We want to set it equal to something. Let's set it equal to ABC value. And as we go up in our code, remember ABC value up here 
is equal to sheet 1, range A2, and the value in that range. You may notice that when you go away from a line of code that you've just written, if everything was entered correctly, it's going to add capitalizations to the code that you wrote. So active cell, the A and the C became capitalized, and the V for value was capitalized as well. So let's hit Alt F11. Now let's go select a cell. So I could select this cell right here, Alt F8, Enter, bam. Let's test it out on sheet two over here, Alt F8. Enter, bam, perfect. So let me recap what I've covered here. I showed you how to get the value from a cell by referencing that cell, which means it's gonna work on the currently active worksheet. And then also by referencing the sheet along with the cell to get it from a very specific cell, from a very specific sheet, no matter where you are in the workbook. Told you you have to put value after it because you want to get the value of the cell. And then I showed you how to set a variable equal to the value of that cell. You simply type the name of the variable, any name that you want. Don't put any spaces in there. Put capitalizations to separate the words so you can read it a little bit easier. Then you, so you write the name, equal sign, and then get the value of the cell. Now, once you have that variable, do something with it. Showed you how to make it show in a message box, a pop-up window that takes the user's attention to it. And then I showed you how to use that variable and put it into other cells. Lastly, I showed you how to get the active cell, doesn't matter where it is in the workbook, and change the value of that using a macro. All you had to do was type active cell dot value. Now there is so much more that I could tell you about variables, about the message box, about active cell, about a lot of things that I showed you in this tutorial, but it would just make it more confusing. Here, I've shown you quick, simple, and easy ways to be able to get values from the workbook, do something with them in the macro, and then put them back in the workbook. In this case, we took them from one cell and we put them in another cell, or we put them in a message box for the user to see. So I hope that this has been easy for you to follow and will serve as a good foundational tutorial for macros and VBA in Excel. I hope you liked the tutorial. If it was helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe and accept notifications so you can see all the new tutorials.